And we are live. Hey, everybody. Hello. Nice to see you, everyone. All right. So um, I think most everybody has just immediately come off of doll stream. And surprise, you get more of doll. Yay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So um, today we're going to talk a little. We're going to talk a little bit about social media today, specifically because um, Dana asked some questions or had questions about it, and we got into this discussion yesterday on Caro's stream. And then Dana let me know that she took some of my advice. So um, that's what I have the chat planned around. Um, most people know that um, I do uh, brand and digital marketing is what I do on the regular outside of my writing. So this will be time where everybody can just kind of um, pop on and they can ask questions if you want. You can tell me what it is that you are going to do. I have some questions that I'm going to ask, so it should be a lot of fun. But before we get to that, I want to uh, my lovely um, effervescent co-hosts to introduce themselves and we'll give Dahl a little bit more of a break so we'll let Dana go first and then Dahl after that. Awesome. Okay. I am Dana Gollin. I also write under the pen name Ava Fox. And yeah, I'm here because I was like, hey, we can totally get on this social media discussion. Let's do it. Yes. All right, and Dahl. Hello there humans, I am Dulcie Silverno, the partially blind alien from a distant galaxy who's an own voices author and apparently loves the writing streams on Wednesdays, so I'm everywhere. <laughs> I write sci-fi poetry and short stories in different genres like crime, fantasy, and occasionally I wrote a romance. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. So I, I try to explore uh, different genres, currently working on a horror story, so that's me. I am an alien who likes stories and I like to explore different genres, but my main one is sci-fi. Hi. And um, other than us chatting about social media, what will you be working on today, Dana? Um, I am actually working on my book two of my seasons of seduction series um, because I was writing. I was writing it. I'm a discovery writer. I was going along, and it it was almost like I hit the Hoover Dam just head on. Um, and so what I've been doing is I'm reorganizing it to break it up a little bit more so it flows a little more smoothly, um, so I can get it finished and get it out to you guys. Get my arcs ready, and yeah. Awesome, awesome. And what about you, Doll? I was a reading a book in my previous sprint, but now I am host. I'm co-hosting from my phone, so I cannot do that anymore, uh, uh, because you know the phone is the one that has the book. So <laughs> I'm not gonna pop up of the stream and pop up. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna work on editing my book. I'm gonna do what I do now, or I'm gonna try. And if I cannot edit, what I'm gonna do is work on social media posts and graphics, which is very fitting for today's topic. Yes, it is. Um, so the piece that you're working on, this is for your other world's submission, right? Ah, yes, I am very intimidated by this. Hi. Super intimidated. One, you but, have you have a little bit of some, some behind the scenes help because you know Caro and well, that's helpful. No, I'm not saying that's, that. I'm just saying um, that I'm just hearing that you, you, because she's done such a great job at telling us what they want, and yeah. you know, you, you, you're not, I'm not, the information is out there for everyone to find, yes. but you knew about it the instant it went up. So yeah. that I, yeah, I, and I just, I just think Caro is such an efficient person, and like, like the, the Chicago Manual of Style, and I'm like, <laughs> I cannot even get the book to work with it because but I am overseas. She's, so she's, eh. she's limited in the involvement of the book selection. Yes. So, yes. So she put it out there because she's well known in our community, but when it comes to the actual selection part, she has a limited uh, interaction in it from mm -hmm. what I understand. Got it. Yes, yeah. and I did she not. I did not yeah. mean to imply in any way, shape, or form that there was any favoritism or special favor or anything that it Karen, won't be. That I know the information I just, out there. So I'll just right. 
new right away because subscribe to Kara's channel on the streams occasionally yeah. with her. You know, she um and and you are. I'm sure that Dal is not the only one who is a little bit intimidated. So take take ease in knowing that caro it's not caro's decision she has a very limited so it's mm. it's actually going to be more people that's why she's putting all this information out and she says go to here and find this link to find out the formatting and this and mm -hmm. that um so ultimately you're not submitting to caro you're submitting to, i know yeah so yeah. take and also I am very, very aware and I'm I, I know that I'm very like casual and very like nice and joyful, but I I am also professional in the sense that if I get rejected, it really it generally it's okay. It means that my book isn't ready, it means that I still have a lot to improve upon and then I can query maybe somewhere else or it well, was just not what they wanted to see. Right. And I think so that the fine. other worlds, the other worlds is also setting it up so that um, when they do finally have their acceptance and their rejections, that they're going to have more information so that in the future, if you want to resubmit, they'll, they'll have like blog posts and stuff that'll kind of help authors understand more about what they're looking for in the process and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so if you, if you don't get accepted this time around, you can definitely you know, learn from the information that they have on their website and then try again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to feel bad. It's just that this is typical doll. This is just what doll does. I'm very okay. nervous. I'm very nervous and intimidated whenever I'm querying. It, it doesn't have to be Caro. I'm right. going to query someone else also involved in the author to community. And I'm also querying that person or that person's boss, basically. But that, that person is also involved, and I'm also intimidated. And it's like, what? Why? <laughs> but it's just what it's we just a me thing. Yeah, we all get a little intimidated. No matter how many things we published, if we if we're submitting something, we all get a little intimidated. So um, I bet you anything, anyone over in the comments would say the exact same thing. If they were submitting something, or they were just getting ready to publish it, and even if they were indieing, then it, it just. I mean, I've published seven books at this point, and I still am intimidated every time I go to submit something or query for something. So um, yeah. a whole bunch of people over in the comments um, you know, saying hi to us. Hey, Devin, good to see you. Grayson, good to, good see, to you. see you. Hey, Heather, good to see you. Um, we've got Jeannie here and Jamie here as well. Really good to see both of you. Um, let's see. We... Evie, I know, just popped over from Doll Stream because I saw her over there and talked to her over there as well. Hi, um, Evie. Wendy is here. Wendy Scribbles is here. And, of course, the wonderful Sarah, who we were talking about a little bit. All good things, Sarah. All good Sarah. things. We were talking about how, all good things, Sarah. All good things. How you, Sarah, are really like the architect of so many of letting so many of us know about all the new author tubers and like us trying to desperately just to catch up with like watching the new author tubers and keeping up with the author tubers that we're already subscribed to so all good things we have dahlia de winters is here as well and sarah keith i will always remember sarah keith's name and her avatar because when I first met her, the first person I thought of was Georgia O'Keeffe, and I oh, love yeah. those paintings. Yep, I I thought the same thing with her last name too. It just made me think about it, and and I like her avatar. It's simple and it's easy. Um, my my initials for my name, they don't lend as easily. The B C B doesn't lend as easily to being able to be streamlined together like that. Um, right. But I mean, I could just put B C like I do on everything. So. Um, looks like Ali Unicorn Fan 85 is also over here. Um, and it looks like everybody was agreeing, doll, that they're always intimidated whenever anybody reads their work, even if it's family and friends, if they're submitting it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everybody was, you know, talking about that. Sarah was talking about she's going to self publish in September, and that's somehow intimidating too. Yes, Sarah, trust me, that is. Yeah, I I mean I've self published and you hit the publish button. Like I always get like super nervous and 
then I hit the publish button. And I've learned that as soon as you hit the live, the, the go live, the go hit publish, you just have to walk away. You have to walk away. And for some reason, I, I personally find it a lot less intimidating when strangers read my work versus the people I know, because mm. if it's a stranger, they're going to, they're going to be like, okay, this is how I feel about it. Uh, one way or the other. And I don't have to worry about that person when it's people I know I'm like, okay, well, what are you really thinking? You know what I'm saying? I know so, you're really thinking something else. It's some, we, 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 um, like have to interrogate our family and friends. It sounds, it, it feels like almost been like they can't, that can't be their honest deep down thoughts. They, right. they have to have more thoughts than that. Then that it, like, for some reason we can't just let them love it if they loved it or not like it, if they didn't like it or, you know, whatever. So um, Heather said she even gets intimidated about doing proofreads for an editor that she knows. Um, so it, it's not just in our writing too. It's, it extends to all facets of what we're doing. I get intimidated when I have new clients for digital consulting um, and talking about that. So, yeah. Um, all right. Um, so speaking of digital consulting, I guess we should get down to, um, probably our first sprint, but before that, what I wanted to do was go ahead and um, talk about, um, like I said, uh, this came up in yesterday's chat with, with Carol on her stream a little bit um, about the different platforms that everybody uses. Um, you know, Dana had talked about using Buffer exclusively as a scheduling platform, um, and that, that had stemmed from the fact that sometimes we're really bad about social media and we just forget to do it. And, you know, forget to do more than just we logged on to it to check our messages and scroll through it real quick. We actually forget to like schedule stuff for it and, and do stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to see um, from everyone, like uh, how much priority do you give social media for your brand building? So for your actual business of writing books, how much priority do you give to your social media um, in order to be able to do that? Not using it for personal, not using it for all of that other fun stuff that we do, um, but just to see. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a sprint and let everybody, um, you know, kind of ruminate, ruminate on this a little bit. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and get timer up here our cute timers yes yep i got a cute puppy dog timer i love, I love your puppy dog timers they're so cute yeah i found this online i love it the dog barking at the end startles me a little bit um when it barks because it's not like it counts down it just all of a sudden starts barking but mm -hmm. that's okay that is okay all right so we will um and get this going and
All right, so our sprint is up. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. That is definitely unsettling. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. I just, it, I don't know. It just, and it might just be because we're so accustomed to when we hear that bark, it means that someone who is not supposed to be there is there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And for me, it, and for me, it, it goes almost a double because um, usually my, my dog has gotten so accustomed to who comes and gets me when the doorbell rings or when she wants me to pay attention to something, she just comes and gets me. And he doesn't really bark at me anymore because it's not like I can hear it from the other room. But once she does start barking and goes off on a tangent, that's when she like races the same room as me and barks and then races out of the room, like telling me something is like way more expedient than, hey, I can just come and get you. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. So we had um, a couple more people um, pop in while we were sprinting. DR Ranger is here. Hey, weirdo. Always Hello, Danny. Um, Leora Sophie is here as well, and she's happy for the write-in. Um, Elizabeth Fairfax is here. Uh, she answered the question, so I'll go back to that in a minute. But um, And then everybody was happy to see Oink make an appearance. Uh, final question, did you literally have Mini Monster and Oink under your desk at one point? Yes, yes. And so the, so Mini Monster is hiding under the desk and that's o where Oink's bed is. And so when Oink came in, Mini Monster had popcorn. So they were both under there having a little snack and then um, Oink spilled the water and so there was water and popcorn and it was a real a real thing and that was like oinks like trip like she was ready to play it was like a, a she went from being very calm and i'm just gonna lay here and be happy to now there's water and popcorn so it must be party time and that's when i had to pick her up and put her out <laughs> yeah yeah i think we forget sometimes that um I forget that because of Oink's size and her massive fluffiness, that she's really very, very young. Yeah, she's still super puppy. Yeah, well, she's only. 16. Thank you so much for describing that, by the way. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. Yeah, she's. I mean, she's just. She's the size of a toddler, and she's yes. so fluffy, and and um. You know, just so fluffy. She looks massive, and and she is. But she's. I mean, if she's only sixteen weeks, then she's still really young. Yes, she's sixteen weeks, and she's sixty six pounds. So, wow. yeah, and a lot of uh, people are a little bit intimidated by her because she is so big, and you can see in her face that she's still very puppy. But because of her size, when she starts acting a fool, they're like oh, that, that's a big dog, you know, stay away. And it's like, no, 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 she's just a toddler who's teething on everyone. Mini Monster's like, yeah, she bit me. I was like, she did not bite you. She teethed. She teethed, yes. Your your arm looked like a perfect teething ring. Hi, Shannon, good to see you here. Okay, so tell me how you two did during the sprint. I... um. I finally found names for these two statues that I have in my short story. Oh, awesome. I was, um, I didn't go to edit per se, so I started doing social media posts and graphics, like, like, I, like I suspected that I was going to do. And so I'm looking on to, uh, mostly for my YouTube, because uh, I think I am prioritizing YouTube, so it, to half answer the question. Um, so I am going through playlists of green screen effects and uh, deciding on, oh, I can use this one. Oh, I could download this one because most of them are free. So it's a green screen effect that people can just download directly from YouTube or whatever. And uh, since I'm animated now, I can do whatever the crap I want with my videos. So yeah. if, I'm see, if, if, I'm, if I'm, for example, talking about something that has to do with, I don't know, koalas for some reason. I don't know why I'm thinking of koalas. 
then I can look koala green screen and maybe I can include a picture or a video of a koala on my video. Why not? I mean, so I'm just being more creative. So I'm using this particular live stream to work on animation, things that I can do in future videos or whatever. Because I also popped on my channel real quick because I have to edit my previous stream with the accessibility segment that we just had. But the video is not processed yet, so it's not up yet. So whenever that's up, I'm going to edit the... I'm going to leave a pinned comment with the timestamps and whatever. Uh, but yeah, that, um, that's... Uh, and, and in the middle of all that, I realized that I have some new subscribers. So I was like, whoa, thank you. <laughs> I got really happy about that. So yeah, that, that was my sprint. That's good. Well, um, so I don't know what got into me. Maybe it's because I'm finishing a beer off of my lunch, or I don't know what got into me, but I got a thousand and nine words. Wow. On that sprint. I didn't even know which oh my God. could move that fast. Right? So I don't know. I'll take it though. I will take it though. So it looks like Wendy scribbled. She got a half a page rewritten, which is excellent. And Sarah Keith got 212 words. Um, Stephanie was, was she, the dog barking made her skittery, um, in her words. So yeah, it, it does me too. And I think it does a lot of people that so, um, Grayson got 307 words and Ali Unicorn got 225. Um, so we did pretty well and we had, um, several people did go ahead and answer, um, the question that we had up about, um, how much priority that each person gives to um, their social media. So why don't you go ahead, um, uh, Dana, and kind of let me know or let everybody know how um, how they did. Oh, it looks like Heather researched some in dashes. Oh, in dashes. Oh, in dashes, in dashes. Oh, there's so there's so many tricky things about those. Anyway, that's another. That's a whole other video. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, I. Uh... Yep, I'm glad that I have my writing friends to help me with those tricky things. Um, so how much priority do I have, do I give to social media? Um, for Specifically for my brand building, I would say it definitely gets the lower end of the stick. Like I would say less than 10%. Um, and I think that's because I go through so much that by the end of the day, um, I totally forget about it. And then I get to the end of the week and I've forgotten that I have, I have things that I can use. I have these tools. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that it's less than 10%, which is a very small priority. <laughs> okay. All right. What about you, Doll? About how much priority do you think you give to social media just for building a brand or just talking about what you know about like writing and stuff? Depends on the social media, actually. That depends on the platform. I, I like I halfway said, I gave a lot of priority to YouTube because I was transitioning from being a silhouette on camera to being an animated avatar, not on camera. And, and if I'm gonna do that, at least I want my videos to look pleasant, to be like visually or like aesthetically nice for people who click on them work on like what am i going to do with the audio like don't get too rambly and so on so improving the quality of my videos was difficult because of a transition that i had but because i i felt like when i was a silhouette it was a lot easier to just be myself if i ramble or not i'm just being myself on camera and it, it's just quirky and different so i was just a lot more free but now I want to also grow my brand and be more professional a little bit. So I'm putting a lot of focus onto YouTube. Instagram, though, I I post when I feel like it. It's not like a, like a reliable every day I'm going to write a poem and I'm going to post it there. Because Instagram is going to be mostly for my poetry. I, I had like quotes and silly things before. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do little poems here and there, like a short poetry thingy. You know, Insta poetry is a thing. So whenever I feel like I'm going to post on Instagram, I need a poem and I'm like, I don't have it. Uh, poetry doesn't come to me every day because I, I have a whole process and it's very technical, actually. 
uh, yeah, it's very passionate but very technical. So mm, Instagram, I am sharing more on the stories, and when I'm sharing stories, I'm sharing music basically mostly. So Instagram is like the one that I forget about the most. Twitter, I just tweet whatever I want because anyway, you guys know me. I write, I post on social media when it comes to music, writing. And anything like sometimes when I have to announce that I'm going to be out of town, but I don't get too personal on my social media. People barely have seen my face. So you guys know that. So I give priority to social media, but uh, it's mostly what I do with social media. I don't get too personal, which I probably should fix. I don't know. I think I am at the other end of the, of the spectrum where I am like my social media is all about my brand. Oh my god. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. It happens. I'm yeah. going to I'm I'm going to I'm going to mute myself while the truck is going. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, so um yeah, I so I think people would be surprised about I place a really high priority on social media, of course, for brand building and doing that, but I actually don't spend a lot of time doing it. And that's just because I've gotten more effective um, and more uh, or more efficient rather at at um, posting and creating my content for it and repurposing old content for new content. So I don't do a lot. I don't actually spend a lot of time on it, but I do give it a very high priority. It's it's obviously it's what my forte is. And so I've but I've spent years building up and knowing how to do things like a lot quicker. Um, so Rosalind was saying that she works on social media presence at times, then current events and politics will send them running. And I understand, Rosalind, where you're coming from. There are times I want to run away from social media just because of current events um, and politics. And it's really easy to get sucked into all of that. Um, I, like, I don't, and this is going to be very, very double-sided. I don't look at social media as much as I will post things to it. When I see that someone is mass posting um, political things on social media, I very quickly leave because that is such a suck. I mean, you can get sucked into that and then your your everything, all your positive energy goes to just bleh. you know what I'm saying? So when I'm on social media, I go through and I'm like, oh, you've got a new book. Oh, this is what you're doing. Oh, this is what you're doing. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And as soon as I start seeing that people are posting political things, I'll mute that mm. person or I will quickly leave the situation because I, I my brand is I'm not a politician and I don't want to yeah. see I if you're coming at me and you want me to read your books I want to see your books I want to see all this other stuff if you want to talk political it needs to be on another platform does that mean, you know what I'm saying yeah. so yes no, yeah. I, I agree with you I really absolutely I agree with you so um, Eva was saying that Social media for them has only just begun. So far, it's about four hours a day with media graphic creation and posting. And they expect things to go up as they stockpile and down as they get into the group of things. Yes, very much so, Eva. Um, that's kind of what you'll notice. You'll figure out how, you'll just figure out how to do things faster, um, how to do things uh, better and, you know, faster, better, stronger, more improved, million dollar man, you know, the six million dollar mm. man. What was that? That was. The six million dollar man or something like that um i have no I idea i don't remember it's i just remember it's, it's an older television show so elizabeth was saying that one post every five years <laughs> when, <laughs> you know surprisingly i didn't used to be very good on social media um even though marketing was my thing i wasn't really into digital marketing near as much so um i you know started off more with the regular marketing and but i did quickly move into um, I did quickly move into uh, digital marketing because I realized that it was just far more efficient I could reach a much broader scale um, especially yes. because I moved mid you know I moved about seven years ago and that's 
just about mid middle of my publishing career. Um, so I moved from the Midwest and moved from Indiana all the way out to Arizona. So all of a sudden I didn't have the in-person network of friends and family and fans and things like that. I had all these new conventions I'd never been to. I was a new face at all these different book events and festivals. Um, so I had to, I had to figure out how to, you know, how to, how to just draw in my network from the Midwest and pull them out to the Southwest with me. Um, and I had to be able to do it digital. So Sarah saying on a scale of one to 10, to social media brand building, they are about a four-ish. They need a lot of work and it's something that they're trying to get better at. Not a fan of Twitter, Instagram is what they prefer. So um, I, I understand that everybody has their favorites as far as what platforms they like to use. Um, I know I'm the same way. What about you, Doll? I like I like YouTube. It's my favorite because I have audio there and I and, and human audio to be precise. Uh, so I like that a lot. Uh, I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I want to put quality content for YouTube, Twitter. I miss a lot. I I do miss a lot on Twitter because things just move so fast and there's not so much searching capabilities. Like Twitter is a little bit weird, but I also spend time on Twitter. I try to catch up there and I like it, but it's a bit different. And also, yeah, I'm muting all the politics and stuff. Um, I never talk about politics, especially because I move from country to country. I have switched continents already. I've switched hemispheres for goodness sake. And so, so I don't, I don't feel like I have an attachment to whatever some politician of some country says, because I don't give two dams about that, mm -hmm. to be very honest. Like, what do they care about what I do and what my friends do? Like, why should I care about them and what yeah. they have to say on Twitter? Seriously, I don't care. Like, not no, thing, it, it's like just not my thing. It's a good thing to have that, to be able to distance. What about you, Dana? What, I know that, I know Instagram, you forget about doing it. Um, but what about the other mm. platforms, other than YouTube, obviously? I um, I don't understand Twitter. Um, I I know it's got a lot to do with the hashtags, and so I've been I've spent a lot of time like finding the hashtags because I know about the writing community hashtags, but when it comes to marketing my brand, I'm trying to do, dive deeper into the reading aspect. I want to get more readers involved. Um, and so Twitter is, it's not frustrating. I just don't understand it. Um, and so the more I try to learn about it and the more I've read and people have given me advice and stuff, I just still just don't. Well, I don't understand tweeting at all. <laughs> I, I get it, I understand. You can, if you want, you can check out my website and my blog. There's a bunch of how to, like, go on Twitter stuff. Right. So that, that might help. I mean, yeah. it, well, if I, I'm try, saying, I try to break it down. I try to break it down pretty simply. Yeah. Like, if I definitely will. I, I definitely will go check that out. And the thing is, is that if I'm sitting at my desk and I can do Twitter from my laptop, I, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. If I'm like on my phone, like a lot of times people will get on the Twitter, they're on their phone. And as soon as I get on my phone and I try to do the Twitter, I'm just like, this is, this is absolutely crazy. And I think that's why I struggle with Instagram. Um, because I know that there's things you can download onto your desktop in order to do Instagram from your desktop. But like, there's a lot of stuff I want to put in my Instagram posts. However, sitting here and like one letter at a time and your fingers going numb and 30 minutes later you have one post. It's like, ah, so I've got to, I got to figure out like, I got to figure a better way. And that's why it's so frustrating for me because it's time consuming and I don't have a lot of time to sit around and do this, which yeah. is why I was glad you told me about those other things. Yes. Yes, which we will actually get to those here very shortly. Um, so Wendy Scribbles was saying that their social media brand building is probably about a three 
they tend to post whatever on Twitter. So apparently a preference there and forget that other platforms exist for months on end. I, I tend to forget that Facebook exists. Um, I, I put things on it. It's pretty rare. I, if, if something gets posted to Facebook, it's probably because it was posted to my Instagram and my Instagram is synced to my Facebook page. Same. So, Same. Yeah I, yeah, I love Instagram. I'm big on Twitter. I love being on Twitter and I love Instagram. Obviously, I like YouTube. Um, I'm, I am actually still really big on Pinterest, which not a lot of people are, but I, I love Pinterest yeah. for being able to really dive down deep. And I'm actually a big Reddit person, um, which I know is hit or miss, depends on the type of time suck that you want in your life if you, as to whether or not you're a Reddit person. I don't believe the time suck, or apparently I'm just a really quick read um, when scrolling through it, but. Yeah, Pinterest is the other one that I don't understand. Um, because uh, it's too I'm, visual. When I'm on Pinterest, I'll find something that I'll like, I'll find something I like, and it's like, okay, well, I want to know more about this. And then you click on it and it takes you somewhere into a galaxy far, far away. And you're just like, well, how did I get here? And what am I doing with it? And so I do like looking at pictures on Pinterest, but as far as like getting information, it, it seems more like a visual playground versus somewhere where I would go to, to actually find like information that I'm looking for. Because like there's been a few times where I'm like, oh wow, this is really pretty, and it's like buy it here, and you click on it, and then it takes you somewhere else, and you're like, well, where am I now? Yeah. Okay. But well, now that I'm somewhere that I'm, you know, lost, I'm not gonna buy it because I don't know who you are. Yeah. Cheers, I'm not Pinterest. even on Pinterest. <laughs> I'm not even there. I don't. I don't know how that goes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can be that way. Editing Bard says Pinterest is a I'm assuming it means black hole, but yeah. and you can be. You can really get sucked in. Um, Jamie was wanting to know if anyone still used Snapchat. I occasionally use Snapchat. Um, no, I and, use, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I use Snapchat to communicate with Mini Monster because I can do all the silly uh, filters and stuff like that uh, outside of communicating with a teenager. I don't do Pinterest or not Pinterest. I don't do Snapchat. No. Um, I, I, I do. I have a few, um, a few writing friends that um, I'm on Snapchat with, um, but you know, that's just kind of, you know, what I do. So I, that, I that, feel like it's not my audience. I feel like Snapchat that I don't know if we're going to touch on that later, but I feel like Snapchat it's for like if you're writing young adult and like for younger audiences, same as TikTok. If you're using those, is for because you're a writer for like a much younger, like youthful audience. And I'm writing adult sci-fi and stuff, and I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't even need to be there. I mean, they, they are not interested in what I have to offer. So yeah, not I, there. I agree with you, doll, on Snapchat for young adults or or new adults. Um, it is definitely that would be the demographic. However, the analytics for TikTok doesn't support um, a, a YA audience. It's becoming much more mainstream and much more mainstream in um, the age brackets of 18 to 35. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it, it is pushing it's pushing past what Snapchat ever it's it's more like it's more like an Instagram demographic and analytics now. So um, is what it's showing, but um, I, well, go oh, ahead. I was going to say, I, so Oink and Tala are on TikTok because of the genre that I write in. Um, I have stayed away from TikTok as part of my branding because it has been brought to my attention that TikTok can also be used as like a I'm available app and I am right here totally not available <laughs> oh anything can be used Oof. as an available app snapchat was used as an I'm available app too um, for a long time so 
So that's why if you find my TikTok, you'll see a lot of oink and a lot of Tala, um, but not a whole lot of me. Plus, I just I don't dance at all. Yeah. So there was a lot of there was a lot of agreement um, with different um, things like Twitter outside of the writing community is a rabid mob, according to the editing part. Sometimes it's it like is. zoo and looking at animals, wondering how they've made it this long. I agree. Yes. Um, <laughs> Eva talks about all of views and passions on personal page, but the brand page is too new for it to come up yet. Doesn't see it really being a thing. I get, um, I get a lot of, I don't want to, I mean, it is political, but it's not like vote for this person. It's more of, it's more of their personal, passionate opinions about current events, mm -hmm. which I respect. But when I'm on my branding sites, that's not the type of, of stuff I want to put on there. So, so if, if you are a follower of my social medias and you post a passionate personal reflection of what you're currently going through and I don't comment on it, it's not that I don't, I'm not empathetic, but that's, that, that's not what I'm here. Um, and I, and I, that is one of the things I do get concerned with as far as like social media interaction, um, is falling into that rabbit. So my, my social medias are for business. Yeah. No, I, under, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, Eva was saying that they cultivate what they see on social media very well. They don't dismiss anyone, but they do make and enforce their boundaries very well. And that's a very good, that's very good is that each writer, we have to figure out what our brand is willing to encompass and what it's not. Now I get on my personal page and for a long time on my branded uh, author pages, I was very vocal because I'm a bit of a public figure in the activism scene um, here in in Phoenix and in Maricopa mm -hmm. County. So I'm well known and people were coming and seeking out even my author pages and not finding content they were interested in, which was social or, or political in nature. Um, and so I had to find a balance. I had to cultivate a balance between what I what I did post and what I didn't post, and um, see how that that you know see how I could make all of that make all of that work. Right. But um, Sarah did agree with you that um, desktop Instagram is awful. They started doing more on it after they got a smartphone, which was about a couple of years ago. Um, uh, yeah, that's what I've been told by multiple people that desktop Instagram is totally not worth it. Um, which is why I was really glad, um, cause like Carol had, had mentioned, she's done some social media, um, videos as well. And I'm, I'm always glad to find out more places where I can like set them up prepare them for what I need them to say, and then forget about them. Um, but once we get to those, I'll, I'll tell you why I got frustrated um, when we get there. Because <laughs> that was that was kind of a, uh, a whole issue within itself. Okay, no, I don't, yeah, good. I look forward to hearing that. So Jamie Barfield said that they're hardly ever on Twitter. They usually get on Facebook, mainly for family and friends, but love Instagram and YouTube. Um, Eva writes is more active with pages on Facebook, but there aren't a lot of authors there. And that's why they ended up finding YouTube. Um, there are authors there. They're just, I mean, they're there, but they're not interactive. That's that's the, the what I found. Facebook uh, Facebook has uh, has diminished the interaction of pages, so it's like very hard for for you to see the content from a Facebook page on your Facebook feed. It's really hard. So this is why a lot of people have just not cared about their Facebook like pages anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those. I mean, I have both. I have the pending profile 
So I have a personal profile with my other name and other friends who don't care about my writing and stuff like that. But I don't post about my writing there. You all see me in my Dal Cecil Runo personal profile, which is dedicated to my pen name. And there is where I post some stuff and people interact with me much more than the page because the page doesn't get any reach. So yeah. I do the same as you do. I post from Instagram and whatever goes from Instagram goes to the like page and that's it. I don't bother with that anymore because of how Facebook has made it so you have to pay for your posts to get reached and that's unfair and I'm like I am still too small to care so I'm gonna do my YouTube and my Twitter and my all of my other social medias instead of caring for that yeah no, I, I agree with you I still um, I still post to my pages um, and I I have it set up so that they can message me um, but I have my messaging set up so that it doesn't it doesn't bug me. So I when I go to check my page is when I get the message, um, and then most I would say ninety percent of the time I'm like, okay, I'm gonna answer you or I'm not gonna answer you. Um, so I do get I still get a little interaction through my Facebook page, but that's why I set up a Facebook profile specifically for my author um, mm -hmm. because and then with the pages because I have a group and I have a page with the pages people have to find you or you have to invite them and then um, very you know it's it's almost like well why do I why do I want to round these people up if they're already in this one place and I'm getting more interaction with them so I haven't, I wouldn't say I 100% have given up on Facebook pages and groups. I just don't, Facebook isn't my go-to place when I want to talk to like my readers and stuff. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you and it's not mine, mine either. So Rosalind um, had a question wanting to know what social media is best for urban fantasy writers. So I- Instagram. Very, yeah. Um, I hesitate to say that any one place is perfect, but Doll is right. Instagram um, has a very strong, you can use the hashtag, just like Twitter, you can use the hashtag on Instagram and look up for urban fantasy writers, or look up for urban fantasy and urban fantasy books. And you can find a ton of different authors that are on there. And our fantasy in general is so, fantasy and sci-fi is so wonderfully visual that it's easy to be able to share elements from from those um, from those to a more visual platform like Instagram. Now you can also have fun with it, and you can go above and beyond, and you can make it visual and audio and and auditor or aud ugh, I can't speak today at all. And auditory that word, yeah, that word, that word there. Um, and you can you can. Uh, do Instagram stories and you can make it more interactive that way. Um, so those would be my recommendation, but um, platforms change. Their demographics, they, they wax and they wane. And so mm. you have to kind of, you, you kind of have to be on them and paying attention to your analytics, which you can pull off of each of your individual, I can't talk at all today. Okay. Each of your individual platforms, you can pull the analytics for them and you can see how well any post is doing. Um, and you can you can get the demographics that shows you the target age range, the target gender, um, where people are from. You can pull all of that information. And if you've done your research ahead of time into knowing what demographics urban fantasy readers are, then you can begin to, you know, filter out what's not working for you as well, and you can adjust with it as it ebbs and flows. Right. So um, Jeannie was saying that desktop Instagram has a great hack, but there is a video how-to on it. So that may be some things that um, that people would look into. Rosalind is hissing and sulking um, because they don't like Instagram, don't understand it, don't want it. But unfortunately, right. I feel you. <laughs> unfortunately, right now, it's it's very um, 
it's very there. It's very where you got to be. Random House goes live on Instagram. Um, Ava was saying that they enjoy, they've enjoyed a few of those already, and that Random House just returned to IG last week. There are a lot of, um, there are a lot of uh, um, publishing houses that go live on Instagram on a regular basis. They used yeah. to go live on on Facebook for about a hot minute. And then they, when Instagram started doing stories, they were like, screw this, we're just, we're gonna go over here where the people are. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there's been a request for Oink. Jamie keeps hearing oh. Dana talk about Oink. Who is Oink? Okay, so I, actually Oink the is dog. right here. Yeah. At so my feet. I, I, come here, Oink, come on. My come captions on. told me that there was a dog whining at one point, so I know yes. Oink is in there. There she is. That's why I had to I had to shut off my camera because she was at there the go. door whining. So here's an oink. This is oink. oink. She has a new name as well. Her name is Oink Chuba because she is 16 weeks old and she's 66 pounds. She is a woolly giant Alaskan Melmute. Oink, look, look, say hi. Hi. I love Oink. I know. And You're she, so cute. Thank you. She got her name. She's named Oink because when she was first born, first she was born on my pillow because I was on a live stream and my husband was like, oh, Tala's going to have these babies on our bed. And I was like, no, it's going to be fine. And sure enough, he's like, babe, get in here. We've got a puppy on your pillow and it was oink and she was making this like like oink like a like a uh, 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 sound and so she's kept it and now her name is oink. oink chuba and i'm sure it'll keep growing it's probably gonna be like oink chuba the destroyer of fingers <clears throat> yep okay so now we know it is the massive puppy yeah. For those that hadn't been introduced to Oink, there is Oink. So, um, we had a question wondering, Dana, specifically where your readers gather if they're not on Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, I I get a lot of I get a I get a lot more of my readers from um, my website, to be honest with you. And I have I I mostly do my website. I advertise my website on my YouTube page. I've, got a, I've gotten a lot of readers off my YouTube page. Um, and I want to say Instagram. I get a lot of stuff to people of interaction from readers on Instagram. Um, I just don't understand it. It's not that I, it's not, I'm not saying that I don't like Instagram and Twitter. I just don't understand it. But that's where I get, like, all the people that I have on my Facebook page yeah. are writers. And all most of the people on my Instagram are my readers. And Twitter is becoming more readers than writers as well. I know she's that's so a nice crazy. that's a nice distinction. I I don't uh, I don't have like a big novel out yet. What I have out is a short story that is part of an anthology. Like that that's the the main thing that I promote. It's like, okay, I wrote a romance short and it's part of this disability and romance anthology. And uh, well, I have some of my poems on YouTube and I have some short poetry experiments on Instagram. That's what I have out for people to like if you want to see what I can do. Meanwhile, and I'm working I'm working on the on the other short story that I'm going to read together with someone else and that's going to go on my YouTube and that's going to be like my main readers magnet because it's free and it's going to be available for people to you know if you if you want to know what I can do here is the story and you can listen to it I mean it's a little bit different from a reader magnet because it's going to be audio format but I don't care I mean I'm a blind writer I can do whatever I want when it comes to audio so so I don't have a distinction yet between where my writers at and where my readers are it's like both all at once together in one, in whatever place I happen to hang out it's weird well, I know and the more 
So the more I see that my readers are going in one direction, um, I am like phasing out where they're not. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not going to completely ignore Facebook, but eventually I'm going to be less active on Facebook and more active on in the areas where my readers are, which is why I need to figure out how to, you know, take the most, make the most of my Instagram and my Twitters, my tweeters. I gotta learn to use Instagram properly. I, I, I need to figure out what, what else to do. I, I finally found the music sharing feature. So I, uh, as soon as I had that, well, I have something to share now. So now that's what I'm gonna do. But I need to learn more. Like what is Instagram for? It's so visual, I don't really get it. So I, I think you would benefit best, Doll, from using Instagram stories and being able yeah. to, to put your, your, use your avatars and be able to put music to your avatars and, and text into. Um, but I also think it could be very um, beneficial for you to go back to how you used to do your YouTube videos with the silhouette mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. able to do your Instagram stories that way as well. Um, so, that may be something I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have any like Instagram one on ones or anything like that on my website. But um, there are just a ton of YouTube about about using Instagram and using Instagram stories to your benefit. So we had a really great conversation going on um, in the chats while we were discussing all of that. Um, That's, mm -hmm. That's definitely one of the things that I've seen some of our fellow authors, um, Tamara and Caro are amazing at those Instagram stories. And so that's what I want to really start taking advantage of um, because I think it's great. I don't want to have to wait till I get to a thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube in order to, to share my stories. Instagram lets me do it right now. Um, so I was really excited and that is definitely one of the things that I need to, uh, focus on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I don't do this. I don't do stories as much as I provide my art on Instagram stories, um, and learning how to, to draw, but not so much with my writing and my brand. I mean, I'm still branding myself cause I'm BC Brown books and I'm talking about how a writer is learning how to draw, but, um, you know, kind of that thing. But there was a great, um, a really great chat conversation going on off to the side about newsletters. And I wanted to share some of the information about newsletters um, and how people are growing their newsletters, which newsletters are great. They are social media. They mm -hmm. are a way to to grow your um, your followers and to grow your brand. Um, I am I am not a big fan of newsletters, getting them or sending them. Right. They're kind of the one area that I choose to slack off in, um, but I'm in so many other things that I had to pick something. Something had to go. <laughs> For mm. me, it's newsletters. But the editing bard um, had a great tip here where they were talking about they could that um, they grow their newsletter following by offering a free writing template to help other authors write their books faster. And but they're not consistent about talking about it though. So that's that's one of the the um, really great tips that was going on over in the comments. There's so many of them. Um, right. I, oh, I was going to say, as, as far as, so I, I am also a slacker of the newsletter. Um, I don't even know what to say in a newsletter. So I don't have one. 99% of my newsletter subscribers don't want to hear about the latest writing craze or how my writing process is. They want to know what I'm baking in my oven, what kind of adventures I've been on, and what's my next release going to be. And so I like to do, I'll do like, I don't know, maybe three or four newsletters a year where like seasonal almost like, hey, it's summertime and this is what I'm eating in my kitchen. 
And I need to get back into that. I have slacked off so badly, but I can guarantee you that your readers, they don't care about what your writing program is. They don't care about, you know, who your editor, how much you paid for them is. Your readers want to know about you. And that's why they subscribe to your newsletter. Um, they, they want to know. They want to know, okay, well, where do you get these ideas? Oh, I went on this adventure, and while I was climbing this mountain, I came. I thought of, you know, happy moments on a beach or whatever. Um, so that's that's why I struggle. I personally struggle when it's like, okay, it's a professional newsletter because I'm like, yeah, but I'm just not a professional. I'm like a, hey guys, you know, I I went to the top of this mountain, and while I was up there started daydreaming and this is where we went with it you know what I mean so your newsletter it needs to be something fun and I think that's why I connect really well with my readers off of my newsletter is because it's more it's more like my yearly Christmas letter to my friend my family you know it's like hey guys I picked some prickly pear made some jelly and turned out it the jelly wasn't so great but it was perfect in margaritas <laughs> so yeah no, I agree with you, Dana. It's that's people want, um, people want, they want the stories behind the stories. They want, they want Dana, not, they don't want Dana writing. They want what led Dana to write yes. kind of thing. So um, that is kind of that, that general area. Um, of, and and that's one of the reasons I don't do newsletters because I feel that I cover that really well in my Instagram and in my Instagram stories. I show BC, I show me behind the stories, and I talk about that stuff all the time. Um, then of course there's YouTube, which for me is more of how to do things. But I do occasionally get on, especially here, I get on and chat about what led me to ideas and. You know how I got mm -hmm. how I got to where I I you know I'm at. Shannon was saying that you know they don't talk about writing in their newsletter at all. It's about it's about them, their goals, recipes, pets, homestead life, whatever's next. Yeah. Answering questions, interacting. That's what a newsletter really is. And yeah. well, and that's why I compare it to like my yearly update. Like so so. Once a year at Christmas time, I sit down and I write a letter to my family saying, this is what we did throughout the last year. And my family loves getting those. So when I don't do them, they're like, what, what happened? Did you bump your head? And that's why I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this as a way to connect with my readers because, you know, yeah, you might be interested in the fact that I'm desperately trying to figure out how to use Scrivener. But my readers are like, what the heck is Scrivener? And why are you telling me mm -hmm. about this? I don't want to be a writer. I want to know about why is Cassius disappeared in book two? And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of along the lines of we uh, hate to give us all big heads or egos, but we're celebrities. And so but Woohoo! Okay. But so it's it's just like the celebrity magazines. We don't care about how Angelina Jolie goes about her acting process. We buy the celebrity magazine because we want to see what the dumpster fire is going on in her life at that moment, or it, whether or not she's expecting twins. Um, we want the we want the personal nature behind that person, not the who, not the professional nature. And it is all a way to build your brand. It, it really is. It's a way that you can um, connect with your reader on a more personal level, as long as you know what your boundaries are. And again, it comes back to boundaries. Right. So, um, uh, so Wendy is like, so the newsletter is more for the readers. Got it. Yes, your newsletter is more for the readers. The um, She's writing everything. Bonnie's writing everything down. Um, yes. Me too. Bard's mind is blown. Yeah, but. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. But it's all good if your mind is blown. That's what we're here for today. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's that's what 
you have to remember is that your newsletter is for readers. Um, and your readers want to know what's going on with you. Now, it's not a diary, so you're not going to be telling all these personal things, but it's where you get to connect with them on a whole nother level. You know, like I wrote one uh, newsletter where I was talking about the the oils that I put in my diffuser while I was writing The Awakening. And I'm not like sitting here selling snake oil. What I'm saying is that these are the fragrances that I was, you know, smelling and surrounded by while I was writing. And my readers really loved it. And they connected with me on another level because a, a lot of times when you're writing romance, it is about, you know, feel, see, touch, smell. And so it was almost like it gave them a little bit of a personal look into what I was going through while I was writing. And they love that. They absolutely love it. So, yeah. Um, but you don't have to go into too many, what are you doing? Like, you don't have to go into too many details. <laughs> I swear, it's like having a small child. You oh, hear you're going into trouble. Okay. If you hear nothing, that's when you know there's a problem. Yeah, I, exactly, exactly. So we have been chatting for quite a bit um, this time around, but it's good because I think we've given a lot of information. We've covered a lot of ground. We've covered everything from your traditional social media to what's up and coming to where to find people to how to do a newsletter. Sarah is so glad that the conversation went in this direction. Exactly what they needed to hear. They've been struggling with the newsletter thing all month. So there you go, Sarah. Hopefully that helps. But I think um, I know we, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. We have enough time to squeeze in um, another another writing sprint. Sprint, or we could do a fifteen minute sprint and have a little more time to chat. Um, Why don't we do a fifteen minute sprint? Because um, I know that you've touched on later, and the editing bard has touched on later in the conversations. And so yes. before we leave, I think it would be great for you to touch on that a, a little bit more in depth, uh, since it's in the chat as well. Yes, so I, I think fifteen minutes would be. Oh, sorry. I agree. Um, so I'll do it. Let's minutes. do 15. Let me pull one up here real quick. And I will get, oops, get one pulled up. And try not to cheat us out of any seconds. It's your breath. Good. Oh, that's Camille's. Yes, I love Camille's little bell.
time. So how did everybody do? I got my comment timestamp thingy from my previous stream. Because, like, if people really want to do a favor and point the StreamYard crew to whatever I did on my stream, I, I needed to pin it, like, put a timestamp. Like, it's this part of a video if you want to show that. Thank you. Yeah. And so I did it. Yay. I and did so it. For those that weren't on Doll's stream, Doll got into talking about um, the accessibility needs of StreamYard for those of us that are differently able to be able to stream more effectively to the YouTube community. Um, and so that's what she was talking about. How about you, Dana? Um, I uh, put a very chewy puppy out of my office and was able to uh, reformat and restructure this two pages. So okay, cool. That's pretty good. So I um, I did nothing. Um, no, not entirely true. I chatted with my friend um, who is over here pretty much doing her own thing because she just had to get the hell out of the house for the day and go someplace where she knows it's like safe and people have been tested and been self quarantining and all of that stuff. So um, she came over here and has been doing other stuff. But uh, uh, we were talking about the stream, you know, about how the stream is going today and stuff like that. So we were talking about all sorts of different stuff. So that's what I ended up getting done. So we had um, several people that answered the question, um, but as to how people did during the stream, it looks like Grayson got 468 words done during that stream. So awesome, Grayson. That's a good well job. Done. So Dahlia was saying that um, for the tools that they use for um, social media is Promo Republic for auto posting, which I've never used, but I've heard people rave about it. So um, I'm sure that it's an, a great source. Um, and then they also use Canva and relay that for graphics. Sometimes they use stencil yes. for graphics. So that's good. I love I Canva. Yeah, I love Canva. I've not used relay that and I've only briefly used stencil. So I'm not as familiar with all of those, but they are really great resources. There are so many resources that are available. Um, Dalio is saying that um, a bit of a collector of graphics software. There's nothing wrong with that. That's it. Sometimes it's good to be able to change it up and have different different stuff um, that you go back and forth between. That way, when you are using templates, they don't get boring. Um, I guess we could take this off of here. Yeah, there we go. Um, the editing bard uses Canva Pro for all the graphics, so actually uses one of the paid accounts, which I do as well. Later for posting to Instagram and SEM Rush for posting to Twitter and Facebook because they have better analytics. Um, I use SEM Rush as well for posting to Twitter and Facebook, but I also use um, Later and Hootsuite and Buffer. Um, so I'm not, I use each of those things for very different reasons. Um, and the reason I picked talking about social media today was because um, Dana had said that she had started trying to use, that she started out, she, she was just using Buffer and then went to later and stuff, right? Um, I haven't had the opportunity to check out later just yet. Okay. Um, but that's what I was, um, before I, I was getting frustrated with Buffer um, because I would load all of these Instagram posts and they had the graphics and they had all the information I wanted to share on them. And every time it was time to post, even when I had the paid account, I had to stop what I was doing and approve. Like, yeah, I had to approve it. And then I had to go and I had to readjust the picture and I had to do all this stuff. And I was just like, why did I waste all this time? getting it ready if I have to do it all over again anyway to approve it. Yeah. Which yeah. which later is great. You don't have to approve it. You don't have to readjust it. You don't have to do anything special. That's right. okay. Great. That's why I cannot I cannot more highly recommend later for scheduling your Instagram posts. Okay. Um, so Eva Wrights was saying that they use Canva, PowerPoint, and have Filmora sometimes illustrator for vectors 
Um, I do use Illustrator for vectors sometimes, but I, I've never used Filmora, so that's, that is interesting. Um, Wendy Scribble. I've heard Filmora is great. Have you? Okay, cool. Yeah. Wendy Scribbles, Wendy Scribbles, not Scribbles. Um, also uses Filmora and Canva for YouTube. Um, Dahlia was saying Filmora is, I, I'm giving up on talking today. Um, says that Filmora is a great program, so simple to use. Um, we had a few more people get some more words done during the sprint, 173 words by Jamie. And Wendy Scribbles has another half a page written. Sarah Keith, 248 words. Eva ate a little and watched more of a YouTube video. That's not a bad thing. Um, Grayson Wild was saying that they love Canva. I do too. Big Canva, big Canva advocate. Um, Eva was thanking Dahlia for the different things to now try out, the different softwares to try out. And the editing bard fixed a broken link in their newsletter sign up. Apparently it was, it was broken. So Heather had to look up some stuff in the Chicago manual style. Love the Chicago manual style. I have my little cheat sheet back here behind me that I can just I grab. I wish, I wish I could get that book. I wish I could get it. I don't have it here overseas. And I looked up, I looked up on Kindle, like if they had a Kindle, like an ebook version. Because then I could, you know, I could just li go through the ebook slowly but surely with my eyes, with a magnifier. But they don't have a Kindle. They they had, there was one, but I read the reviews and the reviews said, no, this is not the actual Chicago Manual of Style. It's like a crappy version of it. It's oh. like if someone copy pasted it badly and I was like, oh, okay. If, so if I don't have access to the Manual of Style. You can actually get an online subscription to the Chicago Manual of Style. I want to say that it's like thirty dollars for an entire year, but you can you can like print off what you need, and from what I understand, you can also use the um, the read aloud option when you're going through it, and it makes it a lot easier. So when you're searching for something, you can just type in in the search bar what it is you're looking for, and it'll take you directly to where you need to find it versus going to the content table, finding the page, flipping to the page, then going to the other page because that's like you might also find this helpful. Um, yeah, and it's got a website. I want to it's um, it's you. I put it in the, the chat, but it's basically www.press. UC, UC Chicago edu. Um, yeah, and that way, you know, maybe that might help you to uh, be able to use it a little easier. Yeah, yeah, yes, please. Put that nice. in the chat if you don't mind. That would be awesome. I didn't know that you could do that. I mean, I have my big, my big thick book, and then I have my little cheat sheet that I use. So, yeah. Um, so Jeannie was also letting Dahlia, who collects graphic software, but the rest of us know that there is a great map maker for other world mapper. Uh, it's okay. Savvy just got here. She got time zones a little confused again. That's all right. Um, we all do it at some point, and I think Especially those I, of us who don't practice time zone changes. Yeah, those of us who don't practice. I'm, I'm the queen of time zone changes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, doll, you you know you know what time it is everywhere. When I say blah, and you're like, oh, but it's it's this time here, and um, so okay, so I put that <laughs> yeah. link. Um, so Dana and I both put that link in the um, chat. I'm gonna pop it up here on the screen as well. So, um, doll, at least this will be able to give you a chance to go back and get that at some point. Yeah. Yeah, that, that will help a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And so um, a lot of good natured, good natured talk about Dahlia is being enabled now by, for the graphics software. Um, Heather went into Canva to play around with branding stuff there, um, created something and put it in as channel art. So I'm going to have to go and check out your new channel art then. Awesome. I also use Canva for channel arts and for all my thumbnails and for all my YouTube content. Actually, Canva is where I do everything. 
And as a video editor, now that I, I finally purchased, uh, now I, I do everything on my phone, people know this, everything is done on my phone. I use uh, Kinemaster now. So Kinemaster is my new app that I purchased. Now my videos look a lot cooler. So that's the software that I use. If you're a mobile content creator, then you know that you are not restricted by just having your phone. Yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, I saw that you had gotten that. So I'm, I'm interested to see what all you learn how to do with it. So that will be... Mm -hmm. No, that will be fun. Um, you know, Savvy Writes Books was also saying that Canva is a great resource, that they find Canva a great resource, which um, I think most of us would agree that, you know, those of us who have tried it and, and seen it that um, really enjoy it. So Rosalind during the sprint loaded a bunch of stuff into their Tumblr queue. See, Tumblr's one that I've never actually gotten. Tumblr's one that I've never actually gotten into. Um, so it's- I, Me neither. I have a Tumblr that is connected to my Twitter. Um, and I always have the option. It's like, do you, or maybe, no, no, it's connected to my Instagram. So it's like, do you want Instagram to post onto your Tumblr? And it's only in those moments when I remember I have a Tumblr. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe I should go over there and check it out. But th this is the first time I've actually heard somebody use that. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. I'm glad you're on Tumblr too. Yeah, so, okay, so we have talked about I, so much today. I mean, I'm lo I, I love the conversation that we've had. We've had a little more conversation than we've had writing sprints, but hey, whatever. This was a pop-up, you know, wild card type of sprint anyway. So um, I'm just glad that we had a chance to talk about everything. So um, I want to go ahead and go a little past the, the mark and I know we're going to have some other streams that come up a little bit later, but also Doll has now been mm -hmm. talking for like four hours straight and <laughs> probably should yeah. give you a little bit. Yeah, of it's fine. Um, anyway, but uh, so I figure we'll go ahead and do some outros and um, Doll will go ahead and start with you since we started with Dana on the intros. Uh huh. Okay, so thank you, and once again, I enjoy this very, very much. So I can, I too, I can go for hours. I'm, I'm very, I'm very thankful that you invited me. Thank you so much, uh, humans, for being here. My name is Dulce Silverno. I am the partially blind alien from a distant galaxy who is an own voices author because I write about partially blind characters or blind characters. So yeah, I include uh, blindness representation in all of its spectrum in my writing. My main project is a sci-fi trilogy that I'm still perfecting before I start querying the first book again, because I already queried it and failed, so improving it. I have a Roman short story out. Uh, you can find the link on my channel. I have social media. You can follow me if you want to. And uh, I have some other surprises and poetry and short stories in different genres coming up in the future. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. I'm, I'm always happy to have you here, Doll. And Dana? Hi, um, I am Dana Gollin, and I also write under Ava Fox, and you can find all of my goodies at my website, danagollinwrites.com. Wonderful, and um, as you all know, I am BC Brown, and this is BC Brown Books. I post videos every Monday and Wednesday about better writing, better publishing, and better marketing for authors. Every Friday, I usually do a live stream from 3.30 p.m. Eastern until 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Today was a weird random wildcard productivity pop-up and social media chat, so I'm glad that we could talk about all of that. Um, and yeah, so I write paranormal mysteries, urban fantasy, contemporary women's lit. You can find me on all the social medias except for Tumblr at BC Brown Books and um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have for everyone today. I do want to remind people that there are two more writers productivity sprints coming up, um, live streams coming up. CL Cook is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And just after that, immediately is going to be Savvy Writes Books at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And from what I understand, that is going to be a snacks and jammies right in. And I want to wear my yes. jammies and eat snacks. I'm so excited. I believe Doll is co-hosting there as well. Is that right, Doll? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Doll will be on her third 
live stream of the day. Um, <laughs> two co-hosts and one and one uh, host. So it will it should be a lot of fun. So we'll be wearing our jammies and eating snacks. Awesome. So all right. So so much. I want to thank everyone for coming out and chatting and bearing with me on getting through the comments. We had so much good chat that I hope I I touched on everyone. I am pretty sure I did not though. So please forgive me. Um, oh, Savvy says specifically it'll be snacks and PJs and bourbon. Yeah, but mostly right. That's her. That's her drink of choice. Okay. All right. I got it. So all right. So we will see everyone later. Um, and I will see everyone for sure on Friday for my live stream. Thank you so much for coming out. Bye. Bye. Bye.